Hello, I'm Jeff Kersey, and in this subject I've chosen a scene from a little village in Sicily called Teamina. I was particularly attracted to the lovely warm colours on the stucco and the purple reflections. In the last programme you saw me take this painting to the halfway point, so let's carry on and complete it. So now that the foliage has dried, I've removed the masking fluid, leaving just the two plant pots with masking fluid on now, that's all there is left. And I'm going to mix a colour for this plant trough and the little courtyard in the foreground, starting with Naples yellow and raw sienna. For the foreground, I've already got some colour because I'm going to use the same one that I used uh, on the main building in the middle. That's a mixture of raw sienna and permanent rose. Okay, so starting with the raw sienna and Naples yellow, and a number 10 brush, I'm bringing that right across the foreground there, up to where it meets the wall of this building on the right. I don't need to wait for that to dry because if the colour of the foreground softens into this, it won't matter. So I can go straight into the mixture of raw sienna and permanent rose and sweep that right across. Remember that this is a flat courtyard, so follow that with your brush strokes by making them horizontal. Now, while that's still wet, I'm going to get a few of these greens I used earlier on. The first one, that bluey green made of viridian and cobalt blue. And float a bit of that in at this bottom left hand corner if I get a nice soft shape here that will help so I'm putting this in straight away while that previous color is still damp a touch of lemon yellow in there a touch of neat lemon yellow still working with the number 10 brush and finally a bit more of the really dark green this is the viridian ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and just some of that into there as well letting it soften in and now we need to give that some drying time well now that that's dry I've taken the masking fluid off that smaller of the two plant pots and I'm going to mix a rich dark brown with burnt sienna and ultramarine blue this is to represent that glimpse of soil in the middle of this long planter across the middle. With the number six brush, I'm just running that across with nice, even, horizontal strokes right up to the wall of that building on the right. You can lose that amongst the green there. I'm cleaning the number six brush and with clean water on it, I'm just going to dampen the area here above this little trough so I can then put some plants in it, maybe there as well. And I'm getting some more of the bright green. That's the Oriolin and Cobalt Blue. I'm putting a touch of that into there. It just interrupts the shape of this trough, showing that there's some actual plants in it, and then the dark green, more of that rich dark green. Don't forget when you're mixing this one, and it's viridian, ultramarine blue, and burnt sienna, to get plenty of pigment in. It's not a lot of water in this one, it's quite a thick, strong mixture, and we'll float that in as well there. There's the very tip of the number six brush to suggest a few leaves. A touch of lemon yellow into there, neat lemon yellow, again with the very tip of the brush. It just adds a few little highlights, the neat lemon yellow. And as I say, because lemon yellow is opaque, you can place it against a dark colour. And it looks like a bright green. Now the next thing I'm going to do, still with the number six brush, is get some more of that nice warm shadowy colour, that purple, made from ultramarine and crimson alizarin. Remember with shadows, colour should always be transparent. It should feel as though you can see what's underneath it. So not too strong. And of course the light's coming from the left. So all this foliage here is casting a shadow into the scene. That's a little bit strong. I'm adding a touch more water to the mixture. Make it like a dappled shadow because this is shadow from lots of different leaves and foliage. So it should be dappled. I'm going to make it slightly redder now by adding a bit more crimson alizarin. 
and bring this across this courtyard. I think I can make this easier by transferring to a bigger brush. I'm going to take the number 10 brush, make sure it's clean, and then carry on with this shadow colour. Use the very tip of the brush where the shadow starts to break up to get that all-important dappled effect. That purple colour works very well with that orangey pink behind it. Maybe use a touch of this shadow to pick out the base of that trough there, right the way across. And then with a damp, clean brush, soften that into the background. And then we can go straight into the plant pot itself. I want a really good, t rich terracotta colour for that. So I'm going to take some raw sienna and burnt sienna. A real rich, orangey red. I'm going to do the whole of the plant pot with that. Trying to leave the thinnest of white lines to just suggest the light catching the rim, the top edge of the plant pot. Let's add a bit of permanent rose to it to get it even redder for this edge here where it's catching the light. And to get that curve in for the base where it meets the courtyard. And then of course to make this look cylindrical, it's got to have a dark side to it away from the light. So that's where that rich dark brown mixture comes in. The burnt sienna and ultramarine get some of that towards the right hand side away from the light. Now to make it look cylindrical, you don't want a line where the dark meets the light. So that's why it's important to put that dark brown in while your terracotta colour is still wet. And the furthest away from the light you are, the darker it is. So I'm bringing a bit more dark brown right down that edge there. It's interesting to note now that that plant pot looks okay, but it's almost floating in space. It's almost off the ground. And that's where shadows come in. Because still with the number six brush, I've now got another mixture of ultramarine and alizarin crimson, that shadow wash. And I'm bringing that from the pot off that way. And look how that makes it look like it's actually stood on the ground. Okay, well that's completed this stage. So now that that courtyard area is dry, just a little bit more work on it. There's the trunk for this little plant. Again, rich dark brown, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. Employing the point of the number six brush and losing that in the foliage. Maybe a branch coming off it, but losing that in the foliage up there. And then I'm going to get the number two brush, the detailer. Get some more bright green, aureolin and cobalt blue. We wouldn't get an uninterrupted view of that trunk, so I can now put a few more leaves in. Also bringing them down so that trough, that planter, appears to be behind them. And I'm going to just finish that off with the same strokes, but with the darker green, the viridian, ultramarine and burnt sienna. Okay. Also, I think this area in front of the house, there's a bit more foliage required there and I'm going to use the very tip of the number two brush for some stalks and then still with the very tip, a few leaves on them as well like that. Just to emphasise the fact that there's quite a lot of growth in this garden area, softening the shape of the building. OK, we'll leave that to dry. So the final thing to do on this courtyard area is just get the number two brush and some more of the shadow colour, the ultramarine blue and crimson alizarin, and put quite faintly at first these perspective lines. These help to lead your eye into the scene. Perspective plays a part in every picture and it's very important there. A useful tip here is when you've got a line like that coming towards the foreground, just make it a little bit stronger, nearer to the actual foreground. And I'm doing that with a touch of the dark brown mixture of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. 